What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about the number one spot to find and catch flounder in shore. And I'm not only gonna be covering the science behind these methods, I'm actually gonna be showing you guys real life on the water footage of me using these strategies, going to these exact same types of spots I'm gonna tell you about, and catching fish. So you guys know it'll work for you. The great part about this approach is it's based on a flounder's feeding habits and a flounder's anatomy. So regardless of where you live, whether that's Texas, Florida, the Carolinas, even all the way up to New Jersey, you can use these methods to catch fish because they're the exact same species and they feed and behave the same way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. So right off the bat, there are two things we need to take into consideration when we're locating flounder inshore. The first of which is their diet. What prey are they feeding on? Number two is their feeding habits. How are they feeding on that prey? So taking a look at their diet first, we know that flounder have recently transitioned from their offshore winter holdings to their summer inshore holdings. Now the reason for that is in the springtime, there is a influx of bait fish and shrimp that show up in those marshes, those coastal estuaries that flounder want to get a piece of. So they're gonna go ahead and move inshore and move to those areas where they have a lot of shots to eat small bait fish and shrimp. So looking at how they feed specifically on those bait fish and shrimp, it's different than any other game fish out there. So snook and trout are gonna chase down that bait over a long distance. Flounder don't do that. Drum are gonna be foraging through the mud. They're gonna continuously search and uproot shrimp and crustaceans. Flounder don't do that. Flounder feed in a very unique fashion where they lay on the bottom, camouflage themselves with their surroundings, and when a small bait fish or shrimp passes by them, they will come up up and grab it and go right back down to the bottom so that they can ambush the next prey that comes down the line. This is a very unique method of feeding. So knowing what we do about their diet and their very specific feeding habits, it makes it easy to use the 90-10 rule, which is where 90% of feeding fish will be in 10% of a given area and locate the number one spot for flounder, which would be choke points. Choke points on and off of a coastal estuary where current is going to be moving into the estuary and moving out is gonna be the easiest place to find flounder. If you're looking at a pass that's going onto a grass flat, that's a great place to find flounder. If you're looking at a main creek that enters onto a marsh, opens onto a flat, there's generally gonna be a lot of flounder there. Anywhere that water is gonna be constantly moving in and out in large volumes and moving a lot of bait through, that is gonna be a great spot to find flounder. Now, what makes a good choke point uh, opposed to several different ones is the tightness of the choke point which means how tight is that area and how easy is it for bait to get away when a flounder does want to ambush it and the availability of bait that's going to be moving through that choke point obviously natural structure is going to attract more bait so if there's oysters marsh grass mangrove roots that is at a inflow or outflow choke point that's going to be a better area to look now also, if it's a tighter choke point, the tightness of it, if it's just a wide open pass, it's gonna be a little bit harder for those flounders to ambush that prey that's moving in. They're gonna have more of a chance to escape. But if it's really tight, if it's just a small creek mouth, have you, that's a great place to find flounder. In fact, you'll see later on in this video, most of the spots that I caught these fish were at creek mouths. If you look at some of the other areas I was looking at, any inflow outflow points off of a marsh that were close to natural structure, oyster bars was probably the most prevalent example, there was a lot of bait moving on and off and there was always flounder in those locations. Now lastly, a very important thing to think about when we're fishing for these flounder is tidal movements. Like I said, they're ready to ambush bait that's moving in and out with the current. So if you're fishing during a slack tide, there's generally not going to be a great bite. But when the tide is rising or falling and there's a lot of water moving that's bringing and taking bait out of a coastal estuary, that's generally going to be when the best bite is. So try to time your trips right and you'll have better success with flounder. So as promised earlier, I'd show you guys some on the water footage and some results from me fishing these exact types of choke points that were near structure, that were tight. These exact type of spots are going to be what you want to target when you're looking for flounder. So let's go ahead and take a look now. So what we're looking at for this spot here is two channels that are gonna dump out into one thin depth change. That is the choke point for this area. So as you can see, one channel over here, another channel over to the left, and we actually do have two oyster bars, so some natural structure to attract bait, one over here to the left, and you'll see the other one to the right. So what we're looking at here is a great area to find some flounder. So I just made a cast close to those oyster bars where the current was wrapping around. I sped the clip up just a little bit to save us some time, but as you can see here, it paid off with a nice flounder. There we go.
Ooh, big flounder. Yeah, buddy, on the Alabama leprechaun. So to recap this first example, he was sitting right there at the choke point close to those oyster bars and made for a textbook catch. So again, here we are, we've got another spot where we've got a main channel that's flowing into an area and these flounder are again, stacked up where the current is flowing. There's a nice oyster bar over here, just like in the last spot, just a nice piece of hard structure for them to hold close to. I've seen a lot of bait popping over this way. So this is, you know, the textbook flounder spot right here. I'm not sure what this one is. Could be a flounder. Kind of feels like one. It thumped like one and it's not shaking its head. Could be a flounder. Yeah, probably. Get the net ready. I see the leader. Ooh, that's a big one. Oh my goodness. I've got him nailed pretty good. Oh, there we go. Nope. Look at that. What do you know? Got some life in him. Oh man, got him again. <laughs> oh my gosh. So again, with this big flounder was sitting at a choke point close to an oyster bar coming off a intercoastal waterway that was entering a creek. This was at rising tide. So, you know, he was facing just towards that intercoastal right where he was supposed to be. Now this next example will show a unique form of structure that I find a lot of flounder around. As you can see, I'm anchored up on this grass line and I'm tossing really close to where that creek outlet is. As you can see, that's a nice little narrow choke point, but there's not too many oysters located nearby. The structure that I believe was attracting bait was that small dock, so don't discount other unique forms of structure such as these. As you can see, it paid off nicely with this flounder here. Oh my gosh. So I was able to check all the boxes off here. I had a nice narrow checkpoint coming out of that smaller creek and we were close to a form of structure that was definitely attracting bait fish, which was that small dock. So again, textbook catch. So for this last spot, it's a great illustration of a really tight choke point right next to some natural structure. Actually, the choke point is being formed by two oyster beds that come to points together where a creek is dumping out. As you can see here in a second, it was exactly where the flounder was sitting. Tell if it's a redfish. Let's see. Ooh, nice flounder. Nice little flounder on the voodoo shrimp. So as you guys saw, choke points can be a very effective and reliable place to find and catch flounder in shore. Now, obviously not every flounder is going to be on a choke point that you find. Uh, not everything with fishing is textbook, but if you look at the numbers, the highest concentrations are generally gonna be in those choke points, specifically the ones that are a little bit tighter, have a lot of natural structure around, and have good current flow where bait is gonna be moving in and out. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any other questions about flounder, whether it's tackle or tactics, please ask it in the comment section below and I can respond to you there. Now, I wanna remind you that this is just a small taste of the information that we have in the Insider Club once you join. And if you wanna catch more redfish, trout, flounder, and snook, I highly recommend that you join us in the Insider Club. The Salt Strong Insider community has courses and tips designed to help you become a more efficient and consistent saltwater angler. And we also have reports from local anglers in your area to help you keep up with the trends and a guarantee that it will help you catch more fish or it's free. Now, with all the money that you'll be saving on rods, reels, lures, and tackle with your Insider Club discount in the shop, the membership pretty much pays for itself. So guys, thanks again for watching and until next time, tight lines.
There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong in wet lines today 